Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. So I went and uh, figured out the math, and it turns out that a yellow long mission does not give you anywhere near enough XP to completely leapfrog level 4. I'm pretty sure that I had an issue with a character leapfrogging a level in the first Let's Play I ever did of Darkest Dungeon, and that's made me really paranoid since, but uh, looking at the numbers, it definitely was not in this tier. So... <clears throat> We're going for this thing. We're going for this uh, explore 90% long mission after this spiked collar. The spiked collar is a powerful item, but minus 50% healing received really is a very significant uh, penalty. This is not how this item worked last time I played, and uh, I think with good reason. It, like this is a this is a fine nerf to a very very powerful item uh, that is still powerful enough that I'm going to use it. So clearly not not that terrible. So I think I'm happy with this party. I do sort of wish that I was going to get one of our frontliners leveled up in time to do this. But obviously this mission's not going to be around next week. Who knows when we'll see the spiked collar again. We've had some very bad luck so far with the orange level gear that it has decided to show us. So I don't think we can really pass this up. Especially given how extremely frequently we're using Houndmasters. So, with that being the case, let us outfit. Uh, th okay, this is just, this is just no good. It's just no good. Again, I don't want to toss anything until I actually see whole sets. Somebody should probably have the surgical gloves, because they're good. And it's going to be him, because he's the only person who's going to be doing a lot of, like, melee damage. And then, yeah, I mean... That's still a fine item. Everybody's reasonably equipped, right? Kesslon and Dudley don't have their weapons upgraded all the way, but I don't think we really have the money right this second to fix that, unfortunately. Okay, you... Man, I wish I still had my cudgel. Do I want to go for the Battered Lawman's badge? Plus 15 accuracy is significant. It is a significant buff. Well, hold on. Let's let's figure out the other people first, because they're a little simpler. We'll figure out what our party looks like from there. So we're definitely taking the Blasphemous Vial. Uh, we're going to need the extra Blight Chance. The pigs, if I remember correctly, are a little bit Blight resistant. It's not as bad as the, um, the Fungus dudes in the Wield, but they're, it's a little bit. And then... I don't know. We could go for a de-stress item, like... I might want to do that here. Maybe something like Book of Sanity to offset Sacrificial Cauldron. This doesn't give him any bonus healing, but he he needs bonus healing less than a lot of other people do. And this way he's at plus 15% damage and minus 10% stress. I mean, that's not, like, it's not amazing. I really don't want to lower his speed, though. Because you're not using Dismas' head. I mean, maybe we do just give him Dismas' head. Cancel out the stress penalty entirely. And just like 25% extra damage is... That's significant. Uh, straight damage buffs are not really meaningful on the Plague Doctor. Which is unfortunate. So you're showing low speed, but it's just because you're wasting. When we get you into the dungeon, your speed's going to jump right back up. So I'm debating whether I want to bring the Legendary Bracer at all. Our party's high speed, um, and we can we can take advantage of that. The other thing I could do is I could go for the Legendary Bracer on the Bounty Hunter, since his speed is relatively low-ish. But honestly, this whole party is pretty fast, once we, you know, feed feed him some blood. Yeah, so let's just take advantage of that. Let's, let's have that be the plan. So that being the case... Maybe I give Dismas' head to the Houndmaster. Really, I can't just drag it over here and... Okay, it has to actually go into an empty slot. And then, yeah, you take this... Because the Houndmaster should be laying it on pretty hard, right? Yeah. He's got a lot of plus stress items on right now, though. 
Whatever, he's a good dodger. He can handle it. Uh, and then you get something that doesn't affect you by giving you plus damage, because that would not really be meaningful. We could give him the Blight Amulet. That actually might be worth doing here. It's really important that his Blights land, or that her Blights land, rather. Um, and she's not... Yeah, alright. It's really important that her Blights land and she's not really got any other... The other thing we could do is, like, give her 10 accuracy. But she's already got 15 accuracy. She's going to be canceling... She's going to be at 100% hit rate against a lot of the enemies. Yeah, okay, I think this is sensible. Party has a couple of good stuns. Actually, the party has a lot of good stuns. We have some pretty serious damage output. And we have two different party members who potentially can heal. Okay. I have high hopes. I think we should be okay. We are definitely just going to bring a whole stack of blood. <laughs> two stacks of torches, I think. These, these dungeons are super long. We might be able to get away, honestly, with just a single stack of torches. Oh, I don't have enough money to buy all the food. Here, let's dump some trinkets real fast. Just offload some things that I do not really need. Suncloak is fine. I'm honestly never going to equip this. That's 2250 right there. Okay, it's... Definitely, we're going to want some shovels... There's good use for medicinal herbs. You can get a lot of food. A couple of keys, and that's like... That's almost a whole inventory right there, so maybe we should stop buying stuff. I don't really want to bring the anti-venom. We have uses for the anti-venom. Hopefully we'll just find one early. But the anti-venom has a pretty good chance of just getting thrown away. This might be too many torches. Whatever. If we succeed here, we're bringing home um, almost 12,000 gold just from the quest reward in addition to what I'm sure will be a basically full inventory. So, it's important, I guess, that we don't screw this up. And that makes me a little nervous about how much stress my Houndmaster is going to take. To prosecute our war against the swine, we must first scout their squalid homes. Okay, well, glad I brought as many shovels as I brought, I guess. Are you... you're craving. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, are you... do we have the right stuff equipped? Yeah, okay. Everybody has the right skills on. So I guess what I could do is walk out here, grab this since we know it's empty, and then just loop around, sort of like squiggle across the rest of the dungeon. I don't really want to go through the battle if we don't have to. And this way we can save a shovel, just in case. Littering Probably gold, we're not going to need all three shovels. Baubles, paid for in blood. Uh, given that we can see two obstacles right now, the odds of there being enough obstacles to run us out of shovels is pretty low. But it's not impossible. I don't know exactly what the generation rules are for the dungeons. But I have certainly seen a lot of blockages in my time. Alright, hopefully we can keep getting lucky and pulling lots of scouting. What do I think the odds are that we kill you before you get your turn? You have nine speed. We actually have three party members who are above that right now, don't we? Yeah. I think we can do this. I'm gonna go for it. If the occultist gets his turn... Oh, yeah, actually, this'll do too. Right, so you're bleeding for two damage. So actually, the stun gas will guarantee a kill here. And it'll buy us a little bit of time not having to worry about that dude. That's a pretty good first turn. Alright, and with any luck, that will be his only attack ever. Oh, we don't even have any bandages. Do I want to just... prevent this guy from doing his thing? 
what am I at? I'm at 145, so I'm at 125 chance to stun. That's an 80% chance for the stun to land. Yeah, let's see if we can, we can mix things up here. All right, this guy only having six speed means we will probably be able to kill him before his turn. He has 10 health. My Blight only hits for five. But I could Blight him and just let him take one turn. Yeah, if the Blight sticks, we can probably get away with just ignoring this dude. Focus on, focus on the Stress Drummer. Okay, good dodge. I kind of wish I had a good AoE attack. This is a really good example where this guy just needs to take a little bit of damage to die, but we have more important we have important enough targets that I don't feel good using an entire attack on him. Alright, as long as he doesn't crit someone in half right here. Okay, cool. Things worked out just fine. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them. Wow, somebody's going to need a little bit of a patch-up. Also, I really wish I had some bandages. <laughs> Actually, I do. Man, Plague Doctors are good. The Plague Doctor is a great class. I really, really like her. Um, the corpse update, I think, helped the Plague Doctor a lot. Because it used to be that it was very rare that you would have meaningful backline targets for very long. I think I'm going to just keep trying to lay the stun in here. Uh, but now that uh, now that killing the thing in the front doesn't automatically make everything slide up all the time, there's a lot less reason to just bring people who can throw huge damage at the front row. A lot of people got really upset by that change, but I've never understood it. Like, if you enjoy there being a large number of viable classes, I'd say it was like completely positive for the game. All right, we can probably just eat this food, and the stun stone is not bad. Yeah, I think this is where we, we toss the anti-venom. Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. Hmm. What do we drop for these portraits? Because we're definitely taking the portraits. I don't really want to drop a key. I would love to hold on to the key. Let's be honest, I'm going to forget to use those dog treats no matter what happens, so... <laughs> Alright, let's just bounce over to here real fast. Uh, you want to use bandages to search that, you know, wrap your hands in... Wrap your hands real thick in the bandages before you go touching it. Okay, so now that room is counted toward our progress. We have, what is this, 10, 19 rooms. So two or maybe three rooms that we don't have to explore depending on um, depending on whether there's a secret room or not. Alright, mosquitoes first, right? So I can go for 7 to 12 damage on one of them or 6 to 9 damage on two of them. They have really high blight resist. Yeah, let's try to focus one down. We're unlikely to land the double blight on the back row. So this is probably the smart way to do this. And yeah, this high-speed party composition has really, really worked out so far. I'm pretty pleased with the way things are going. Okay, all we have to do is land basically anything on this dude. Mortality clarified in a single strike. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. So your blight resist is 80%. My application chance is 140. So still pretty okay odds. Better than a coin flip. Right, and that's the thing, right? Yeah. Slow death. Good work, everybody. Unforgiving. Also, uh, we've been, I think, pretty far above expected value on the dodges so far. It feels to me like we've dodged a lot. A momentary abatement. 
Okay, we are at the point where that bleed is starting to become a little bit more painful. Surges as the enemy crumbles. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Man, <laughs> I wish these portraits stacked a little bit better. Uh We are not even close to being Man, okay, well, we have a ton of food. Maybe I just dropped the medicinal herbs. I mean, you go ahead and use one. Clear that buff. The medicinal herbs' primary value is that they can be used on a lot of the curios you find in here to give food. But we have a lot of food still, and we're finding food all the time. I don't think I'm going to make room for this invitation, because I don't think we need one. I would be very surprised um, and outraged if the, uh, if the Baron thing took us what do we have six invitations left if it takes us that many tries I may just rage quit and I think for now I value everything in my inventory more than the crests I don't think 250 gold is super great but remember this is not 250 gold this is a placeholder for a full stack of gold we'll find plenty of loot Ooh, that's a bummer mechanical hazards possessed by evil intent Okay, well, if there's a battle in here, a, an early battlefield medicine could remove a lot of these blights, or a lot of these bleeds. Alright, so we gotta start thinking about when we're gonna make camp, uh, just as an inventory space concern. Maybe the first camp is pretty soon. Maybe it's right now, so I don't spend another torch. We don't really need it, but it would allow us to, like, basically set ourselves... Pretty much back to the beginning. Yeah, okay. Let's fight this battle in the semi-darkness. And then we'll, we'll see what's up from there. So, 60% and 60%. These have an 80% chance of landing. Should they just go for the stun? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to lay in the damage. This guy needs to be hit for nine more. We should be able to do that. Wow, is my... This dude's actually gonna get pushed over the edge. Like, I actually think maybe I have to do this to lower the chances of that happening instead of attacking this dude in the back. And then we'll, uh... We'll go for tentacles here. Okay, it's lethal on you, not quite lethal on you. That's not great. Okay, that's fine. And now the question is, do we finish off the Swine Marcher or do we go after the Gorer? Actually, the Gorer has enough prot. That's right. Mid-tier mid Gorers actually have a ton of prot. Let's just finish this, dude. Wow. Holy shit. That was a lot of damage. <laughs> Okay, that's a little bit of a shame. This is not really a time for people to not be taking their turns. Let's try to buy a little bit of time against this guy. Okay. He has four speed, so it's very unlikely he'll go before these three. We have a little bit of time here to sort of figure things out. So I don't really need to heal. What with the uh, camp I'm planning to do. So maybe we just like really lay into this dude? I could mark him. The mark is probably going to be one damage. It'll give us plus 90% damage from you though. Eight to fourteen versus seven to twelve. So I'd be I'd be basically sacrificing a turn from here from Castellan to almost double Tinel's turn, but it also doubles Tinel's next turn. No, I think it's better just to go for the stab. I think it's gonna end up being more damage over the amount of time we actually have left in the fight. Maybe that's a little hopeful, but I'm hoping that we kill him this turn, obviously. Okay, that was actually good enough. We got there. Slowly, gently, 
Okay. This is how a life is taken. Uh, we have enough inventory space for all that stuff. Did we get a scout? We did not. If we'd gotten a scout, we could have made like an informed decision here. As it is, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use our first camp. I don't think I needed to bring two slots of torches. I think that was wasteful. Firelight and uneasy companionship. All right. So your stress needs to come way down. We don't have a super easy way of doing that. We could hit him with the leeches, restore his health, and he actually does have some diseases. The tetanus is a real bummer. Why don't we do that? Oh, I didn't know that was all diseases. I thought it was a disease. I did not realize that the leeches would cure everything. That's really good. I'm very pleased with that. Are right, you... Oh, we forgot to... We. I, I forgot to bring... An ambush prevention. Uh-oh. That could be bad. So we gotta get this dude stressed down. Um, therapy dog is a little bit less efficient than some of our other stress reducers, given that nobody else has a lot of stress. But the minus 10% stress thing for, uh, for four battles is not bad. Um, minus stress buffs are a lot more useful when you can have them at the beginning of the battle than when you only get them at the end. So I don't traditionally love skills that give uh, minus stress buffs, but I do like camp skills that do it quite a lot. So we have seven points left. We could do a pair of encourages to take us down to three, and then I don't even know what. We could use dark strength as well. What do we have that costs three that's interesting? Pretty much just this. So we could do this plus drop him to 20 stress. That actually seems okay. So he'll buff himself and then we'll encourage him and encourage him. Okay. Only about 20 stress throughout the whole party. We have some good buffs. Fingers crossed on the on the ambush. I mean, even if we do get ambushed during the night, it's not necessarily going to turn out poorly. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted. And this party's a Purpose little bit more clear. Oof. Bad start. This party's a little bit more resistant to the negative effects of being shuffled around than some of our parties have been. This dude dies immediately. Like there is nothing we could do that is more valuable than killing this dude. Oh, he has one hit point left, effectively. Well, we have to hit him one more time. I'm, I'm certainly not letting him give everybody horror. This is dangerous. These guys have pretty high crit rates, in my experience, so we might, uh, we might see some unfortunate stress uh, results from this fight. We just need to be hit for two. Well, we don't really have anything that hits for two. This whole party sort of just, like, lays it on. Oh, I got him with the Blight, but I didn't do any damage to him. He's at 110% stun resist. So we only have a 45% chance to... Yeah, let's just hit him. Never mind. Okay, and then we can stun this guy. Probably. Never mind. He moved back. That's right. I forgot that his thing moves him back. We can still stun him. If the Houndmaster goes before he does, which I think is likely. So, I think I probably can afford to just do a two-point hit. I know this is not amazing, but there was a chance of a crit, and I don't think it's going to change anything, really. Yeah. Success so clearly and uh, or is it man. really a trick of the light? We don't need this many torches. Okay. Yeah, I shouldn't have bought two full stacks of torches. More than one stack was probably a good idea, but 
I think two full stacks is too many. Oh, this is good. So this dude is pretty stun resistant, but we might be able to land one. Ah, damn, her dodge. She has a lot of health left. She's eight speed. I'm gonna stun her. We can't kill her this round, but we might be able to kill her before she gets to act next round. And do I just... I mean, we should... We should finish this guy off, but he's slow. And we're probably going to get Abyssal Artillery off or something. Like, I think he might die of incidental damage. Is basically where I'm going with that. 120% chance to stun is a coin flip. But I think... Yeah, let's do that instead. Okay. That's pretty serious. That is a very serious attack. The ground quakes. Okay, so we do need to hit you once more. This is actually a really good chance to land a stun, though. Yeah, and then... Kill him with the impact damage from the grenade, so it doesn't even matter what his blight resist is. And we do have a little bit higher total damage output from finish him, thanks to the... Uh, Bonus damage exactly cancelling out that penalty. Wow, this is a lot of portraits. Um, well, this is 500 gold. I kind of, I think I'm going to drop the citrines. The skeleton, holding onto the skeleton key is maybe wishful thinking. But I'm just going to keep wishing for now. I love this. I love 12 portraits already. This is fantastic. We really needed a cash infusion mission like this, too. I'm really glad that that this worked out to be the sensible thing rather than just going back to the courtyard. Alright, so we will poke our heads out here. Okay, I don't, don't want to interact with that curio. So the smart thing to do, right, is to wrap around like this and then to here. And then we can... Although, depending on the scouting information we get... Potentially, from when we enter this room, we may not have to do this battle. Alright, alright, alright. Calm down, I'll take care of you. I've never had anybody blood starve on my watch yeah, yet. We're certainly not going to start now. No clemency in this place. Okay, what do we get? I'm starting to think we're maybe not going to get a secret room here, which is disappointing. I probably shouldn't have torched before opening that. I should have waited and, and torched right before we entered the room. Okay, so... Yeah, we'll just skip We'll skip these two rooms. We'll just go straight up. That'll be our, that'll be our two rooms that we're allowed to not go into. You're at 23, you're at 20. I think I'm going to step over here and disarm this trap, or at least attempt to. Yeah, that's good. The odds of that working out were pretty high. Okay, just nobody touched that because I don't remember what it does. I, I don't remember how to interact with it usefully. And then maybe we can, um, since we know these two rooms are empty, maybe we can stop torching, like, now, fight this in partial darkness, and then do these two rooms, camp here, Get a little bit of inventory space back. Alright, uh, you have to die. Hmm. So this will do one to two points of impact damage if it doesn't crit. So even if I do play grenade, we're going to have to hit him with something else anyway. Maybe the better play is to throw a stun in case we can't also clear the... Swine spawn, or maybe I should just... I'm just gonna light up this guy. That ah, didn't work. All right, well. Didn't actually save myself any efficiency there, unfortunately. 
They could have, though, right? The, the Abyssal Artillery has a pretty high crit chance. And also, I think lethal was within, uh, <coughs> within the damage range. We just didn't roll that well. <clears throat> okay. High speed party is really nice, though. Uh, do I want to throw a heal instead of doing anything else? This is not the last fight before camp. <clears throat> so we do have to care about our health a little bit. Yeah. Okay, not bad. Oh, bad roll from our bounty hunter. Let's the dude get a turn in. But if this stun lands, yeah, he probably doesn't get to act again. Let's just fix that, shall we? A singular strike. Okay. These nightmarish well, creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. <clears throat> I do not think we're going to see a secret room at this point, so I'm comfortable using a key on this chest. The question is, what else do we do? <clears throat> Well, we know for sure that we're not going to need shovels. Even if there end up being blockages in these tunnels, which there totally could be, um, we have the ability to just walk back and do these rooms instead, so I think I'm comfortable shedding the shovels now. And I might be okay dropping 125 gold, since I know if we find, we'll be freeing up an inventory slot in a second here. I wish I could just jam the key in the chest right now and then put the gold in that slot. Yeah, all right. Huh. Do I want to let go of a whole stack of crests? We probably want... Let's do this right now before I forget. <clears throat> we probably want to... Keep t I don't think we want to drop food. Not yet. <clears throat> I mean, I could just not camp again, right? In which case, we do drop the food. Because we don't really need it. Things are going super well. We probably don't have that many battles left to go. Yeah, okay. Oh, that was stupid. <clears throat> People are not at full health. I should definitely have eaten some of that food. Okay, if we still have medicinal herbs, you can get quite a bit of food there. Now, um, <clears throat> to clarify, the reason I dropped food but kept the firewood is that while I don't want to have to camp again, um, using the firewood right before the end of the dungeon will allow us to just use our stress dropping skills and basically reset our stress so that we can be almost certain that we won't have to pay for de-stressing anybody even if some dumb stuff happens between men and women. And you only have to have two food left for a, uh... Must you? You only have to have two food left for a camp to uh, pretty much guarantee you stress reduction. Not pretty much, to definitely guarantee this question. Okay. okay, this guy only has five hit points, so we have an 80% chance to land the blight and it will kill him if it lands. A powerful blow. I think we can take this guy out before his turn. Although that does hurt a little bit. It'll be fine. We'll get him with the, with the dog or the occultist knife. Okay, that, thank you. That's exactly what I was going for. Every once in a while, them taking their own turn works out just fine.
Okay, pretty good odds that we'll be able to kill this guy before his turn. He does have higher blight resist than a lot of the other pig dudes do. Okay, good enough. Wow. Remind yourself that overconfidence huh. is a slow and insidious killer. Okay, this could be really good. This this torch. Ah, there was a secret room still. There was so little space left, you know? I think I made the right choice, but. At this point, maybe I do want to drop the firewood. I feel like we got things under control. We're only going to fight once more. We can just go straight to it and wrap around like this now that we know what the hallways look like. Ooh, except we don't actually know these two hallways. It'll be fine. So I think I am. I'm just going to toss the firewood. Or... There's no reason to toss firewood. What am I saying? We just right-click on it right now. Huddled go ahead together. and eat two food. Furtive and vulnerable. Rats well, it may as well maze. be four. Right, because when we have hunger events, we eat it in increments of four anyway. And then we take the thousand gold. Don't need the torches anymore, I guess? Because we're about to go back to full light. Yeah. Yeah, that's sensible. And then we just... Um, we do therapy dog again. We have a very, very small amount of stress over the course of the whole party here. And then we have seven more time units with which to do whatever we feel like. So he's the only person who's even capable of having diseases. Um, I don't really want to gain stress right now. So I guess we just like, let's do, this is how we do it and tracking. And a pep talk on somebody? Maybe on the Houndmaster, since he's prone to stressing. Although, his stress has not been a problem at any point so far. It's just lucky targeting, really, but... Yeah, let's pep talk somebody. Um, how about... It, it does make the most sense for it to be him. Also, it's worth noting that he doesn't get the 10% stress reduction from his buff that he gives out. Okay. So there's a chance now that we will get a nighttime ambush that will reverse the progress the we made here. The promise of safety. Didn't work out that way. So I think since we have no more sources of light, I think we want to go to this room now. Uh, yeah. And there's still a chance, right, that we find a key somewhere. You do occasionally loot a key. Ooh, good start. Alright, now all we need is a little bit of luck on the blight here. Beautiful. And which one? Probably this one. Screw this guy. To be perfectly honest, we might get away with this attack that we're about to take being the only attack we take for the whole battle. That reduces the likelihood of it a little bit. <laughs> Must you? Everything was going so well. Why do you hate it so much when things go well? Alright, so this guy is the same speed as our bounty hunter. We have a better chance of landing the stun for the Reaver if we do it with the Houndmaster, but I'm concerned about um, letting this guy have an extra turn, basically. And the chance of landing a stun on this dude is still pretty high, even with the Bounty Hunter's uh, stun chance penalty. Alright, let's see some crits, guys. We could use a little bit of stress relief. Ooh, he got a good roll on his speed check. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Precision and power. As ever, the uh, the biggest danger. As wow, mount, that's a lot so of portraits, dude. Resistance. Um, as ever, the biggest danger in allowing an enemy to have a turn is that they may uh, get a crit, right? So, 
I think at this point we drop the stun stone. Um, if we find basically any more gold at any point during the adventure, the pile of gold will be worth more than the stun stone is for selling. And we certainly aren't going to drop any of these heirlooms. I'm not dropping the blood. Uh, and we need this food in case hunger events come up. If we do find a key somewhere, we will, uh, we'll have to consider. So we're not going into the secret room. I don't want to um, extinguish the torch yet because we don't actually have a scout on these two hallways. There could be fights in them yet. So let's go ahead and light that up. If we knew that these two hallways were safe, the thing to do would be to extinguish the torch before looting that curio so that we could get the maximum extra loot chance. Okay, good. I'm glad I didn't go to zero light. Alright, his stun chance his stun resistance isn't high enough that he's likely to resist any. Let's let's try to get this guy down. We'll maybe have to endure some shit from the corpse eater, but all efforts now go toward the destruction of this ghoul, because screw these guys. He has a lot of prop though. Okay, good, good, good. Good start. So that blade will do ten damage, unless we get lucky and kill him before his next turn. It's a good start. That's fine, I guess. Yeah, he's 190% stone resist. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to stop him from getting off a howl or something. Okay, Skull Toss is... Believe it or not, Skull Toss, which is a high damage stun and stress, is relatively not that bad. Go for the coin flip on the uh, on the stun here. Okay, cool. Because man, oh man, am I glad that we didn't uh, end up eating the howl. Right, so you have 120 percent bleed resist. Um, <laughs> poor plague doctor is just sort of out of useful things to do. I guess start applying heals, hoping for crits. Intrinsic merit, unless inordinate exsanguination be considered a virtue. Oof. Okay, that didn't that didn't spread stress out too badly. Uh, what are the odds that? I mean, there's a pretty. I have no idea what the odds are that there's a fight in any given hallway, but it feels low. It feels to me like we maybe don't have to babysit people's health too much. Let's try to make sure this dude doesn't get another turn. Touch yourself up. Okay. A victory. Perhaps the turning point. Still don't really feel comfortable. Man, um Am I just letting some portraits go? That feels wrong. I maybe drop half a stack of busts for some more portraits? I think I do. It's not that I don't need busts, it's just that we need a lot of portraits and that you don't really get that many. They're hard to carry around. Okay. Mind Sucks. Such missteps are the exception, and not the rule. Right at the end of the dungeon, he gains 40 stress. Okay, now we know that we are safe to completely kill the light. Darkness closes Let's loot some stuff. Never mind. I guess I should have not doused the light until we were at a curio the, where we wanted to use uh, the lower light level. Because if somebody had compulsively read those books and gained stress, I would have made us gain extra stress. <sighs> There's a lot of room to make small mistakes in this game. We got 15. This is good for you. We can see what this curio is. Nope, I'm not. I'm not going to interact with the flesh cart without some medicinal herbs. Nope, another flesh cart. Okay. Here's something. So we can drop our food to pick up the onyx, or probably, honestly, I would probably just pick up the portrait. But if we do, we leave immediately, right? We don't go, I was gonna go check this curio. 
But I don't want to walk at all if we don't have food in our inventory. I think that's right. So, is it 500 gold or is it one portrait? I wish I knew how many portraits we still needed in total. God, I hate that sound. Holy crap. Uh, let's make this decision quickly and get out of here, right? I'm going to take the 500 gold and maybe I'll regret that later. Oh no, we don't have a... We have to go to this room still. Well, that was foolish. If we get a hunger event, I'm going to feel like a real dumb guy. I was... In my head, the mission was already completed. Okay. I'm going to push it. We can see what this is. Okay. We don't have to take any steps. We can see what it is before we have to move again, so we can, you know, make an intelligent decision there. Okay, so we bring home... Uh, a little over 18,500 gold. Ah, oh, man. We haven't had a mission that just felt like a, a bona fide, unqualified success in some time. And I think I really needed this. The, the relief that I feel right now is almost indescribable. It is palpable. All right, everybody's level four. Picked up lethargy. Oh, that's a real kick in the head. Well... Disease, redu disease removal is pretty cheap. Thick blooded is whatever. That's fine. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. Replaced claustrophobia with sickly is probably an upgrade, but claustrophobia also is pretty meaningless. Warren's Explorer is fine. And on guard, I like on guard a lot, actually. Plus four speed on the round where speed matters the most. Okay, yeah, like I was saying, that, that was just a success. That was just a wonderful thing. Huh. And their generosity is notoriously short-lived. Well, I guess let's have a look. Dismas lost a thousand gold after becoming overcome with emotion and donating generously. Damn it. Fairfax is feeling sluggish because she got way too drunk. Okay, one vial, of, one vial of blood drank. We did end up spending quite a bit of blood. So let's pop in here and have a look. Okay, no, not really selling anything worth taking anyway. Okay, so we're back up to 36 portraits. I always do that. I always click the wrong one. So we needed 33 portraits for this upgrade. Okay. So we're basically set, though. We don't really need a lot more portraits. We can still use the portraits to upgrade... Is it the tavern? Yeah. But it's not, like, necessary. Not in the way that upgrading the guild is, you know. So, I feel really good about the loot we pulled there. Uh, before we make any decisions at all, just out of curiosity, let's pop over here and see what's what as far as available rewards. Plus 40% healing received. That's not amazing. Solar crown is fine. It's not bad for a green, a green tier stress relief trinket. I don't really like the fortifying garlic. It's, I mean, it's all, it's all upside, no downside, but the reason it's all upside, no downside is that the upside is very small. Um, this most of the time will not have a meaningful effect, uh, and it's just not worth a trinket slot when you could use that trinket slot to gain ability to kill enemies faster. Because really, it's like seriously, letting enemies have turns is a real bummer. That sucks. So another legendary bracer available here. I don't know that we uh, like are super excited about that. The Solar Bracer is not very exciting either. Don't like that. Don't really need Eternity's Collar. I could definitely see, though, what they're going for. The Flagellant has such a high death blow resist um, that a Flagellant Collar, a flag an Eternity's Collar Flagellant could be at death blow for a couple of turns, and maybe you could, like, feel okay-ish about it. And the idea is that they're, like, pretty good while they're at, uh, at death's door. But I don't think we're gonna go after this. Honestly, though, what are we going to do? My party, my Baron party is not really ready to go. I guess the dudes we just played could be a Baron party, though, right? Like, we came out of that dungeon in really good shape. Let's, let's head back. So, I think it makes sense for us to go back to the courtyard. Kusi and Dismas could go back out. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Bellicote and Tinel are also fine. Fairfax 
could as well, but probably shouldn't. And we still need to, um, we still need to meditate with power, which she can actually do now. God, I'm glad we made all that money. I feel so much more secure when we have a little bit of a cushion against things going horribly wrong. So we don't have to de-stress anyone else. Let's take a look at this and figure out what our party could look like. So we could take... Castellan's at 38 and Fairfax is at 44. The two, the two real healers that we have ready to go are both pretty stressed. I don't love the recovery charm. I mean, the legendary bracer's not terrible. I'm really hoping to see some more of the class-specific oranges that we haven't seen yet, because there's a lot of good ones. But the game is just, like, really reticent to show us anything cool and new. Are there any missions that have a significant number of deeds as a reward? Because we still need a lot of deeds as well. We're way less excited about portraits at this point. And I'd love to make more buildings, but, like... I think we have to fight tier 3 bosses to do that, and that means the tier 3 bosses need to show me something. I'm not too worried about it. We got the one building that I feel is, like, really making a huge difference. I wouldn't mind the one that gives us uh, more stress relief for people who just sit idle in town, because obviously I use that a lot. So... What, we could do, like... What if we did, like, Castellan? God, I wish we had power available. Their Blight Resist is a little... a little high. Like, we really want to take advantage of, of them with Bleeds. I certainly don't want to send... Castellan out as the only healer, though. Due to his... propensity to heal for small amounts very suddenly. But, like, we could do Tinel. Like... Maybe something like this? He still has access to this stun from the third row. So this party would have three people with strong stuns, and then one person with a, you know, normal strength stun. A little bit less chance to hit. Yes, yeah, so this would be at 145. Her stun's kind of like, it's not a weak one, but it's, it's not as good. This party does not have a huge amount of healing. We might want to take Lick Wounds or... I mean, Card Dog's important for keeping people alive as well. I haven't been using it a lot, but we haven't had to. Uh, and when people are on Death's Door, Guard Dog can be really nice. Well, let's uh, unequip everybody here before I forget. Yeah, the fact that Power was locked out of Stress Relief last week really, really screwed things up. Because power being, power being available for the mission would be great. Well, is there like... Do I want to just do one of these greens? We could pick up bumper crop. Move a bunch of people up into the next... Well, I probably want to fight a boss if I'm going to move up into the next tier. Fortifying garlic, though. Like, at this... If we fought either one of these bosses, it would be with the plan to just sell the orange trinket, probably. I mean, we would hold on to it, but, you know. Next time we're low on money, fortifying garlic would be on, like right up on top of the block. That said, money and crests. Maybe it's a good idea to just go ahead and do this. I do think we could use another little bit of de-stress time. I might even put Fairfax, like, in a de-stress building. No, that... It's dangerous to take people in with a significant amount of stress, but it's also dangerous to pay for de-stressing that you don't have to pay for. <laughs> and we do need crests. We don't need them as badly as we need some other things. Although at this point, it's pretty much like deeds and deeds and crests are now our concern. Portraits were like totally fine on. And busts, we don't really ever need another bust. Unless we want to actually construct a building. But that'll... Let's let's worry about that when, when that is worth worrying about. We could go after the Necromancer. 
Right, if we go after the Necromancer, this team makes a little bit more sense because the Blight's actually really good in the ruins. And then, like, do we just take the exact same squad out? Yeah, maybe, right? Like, this is this team is pretty good together. Uh, how much... I can just peek into the shop, right? We have seven blood left. Ugh. Well, I think we need to I think we need to take another week off. I don't think we're ready to go back to the courtyard yet. Yeah. So I think maybe we just do this. We're probably just gonna end up selling the legendary bracer too. But Yeah, there's no way I use a legendary bracer. I'm sorry I'm so indecisive. Um it's better for this stuff to be at the end of the video though, right? <laughs> The, the truth of the matter is, we just don't have a good mission here. Maybe it is better to just run... Like, run this. They're not going to show us a good item from a boss, apparently. Let's just get some get some frontline dudes. We'll, we'll take, like, kind of a weird party. That'll be fine. Oh, no, not this. Uh... Actually, we should get our flagellant. Yeah. Let's do like this. And then. Oh, man. You can't really fight from the third row, can you? He can bellow and use retribution from the third row? <laughs> this is probably not. This is probably not good to try like a super gimmicky build against a boss fight. I just really want to get frontliners up. I definitely want to get my flagellant up. Yeah, this is not awesome. And then who would be in back? We could bring the jester and do Herbert in the back row instead. I mean, if the jester's right, uh, if the jester is the right player, play anywhere, it's the cove, right? Things are way more susceptible to bleeds here than they are in most places, and. Hmm. We just say, yeah, the problem is we have too many uh, too many guys in the low tier who desperately need to be in front. We need to start moving some of them up to the top, up to this tier, so that we can start mixing them into parties. Um, so we don't have to have them always grouped together. Yeah, okay, I think this is probably what we have to do. We'll buy a little bit of de-stress time for people, just a little casual de-stress. Um, we'll get a trinket that I don't plan to use but is valuable at least a lot of crests and some good XP for everybody will push the cove closer to showing us the first of its yellow bosses it's the other option we have is we could do a green short and then another short like in the same video probably and that way we'd be able to see the first yellow boss from the wield as well this just gives busts but yeah, you know what? Maybe that's the right thing to do. Maybe we should just generate some quick XP. And if that's the case, do I want to try a slightly sillier party makeup, maybe? We probably want to bring in these two, right? Let's get everybody up to level two. And then, like, the wield is a fine place for a jester. And Fitzroy, I suppose? Metal before madness. Okay, yeah, this is what we'll do. We'll plan to just do a, qu a couple of quick short ones, um, and that way we can allow a little extra de-stress time for our people who are kind of close to the threshold where I would pay for a de-stress. Uh, we can maybe generate a little bit of money, because these runs tend to be, like, pretty cheap. Yeah, this will be fine. This is a good strategy. Uh, so I don't... Yeah, I didn't have anything equipped on anybody anyway. How much... I was about to say, how much do I want to put trinkets on people? But I, I think the answer is none. None none desire to put trinkets on people. Uh, we do want to upgrade skills, though. Because the skill upgrades are going to have to come sooner or later. I may as well take them now. Do I actually... Do I want to buy training regimen? I don't want to end up not having enough portraits for this, but also we're pretty far off of being able to make use of that. Heroes have to be level 5. Well, we're not that far off. 
But if I did this, I would be at 28. I only need to bring five portraits back. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and buy one level of this. It's not gonna save us a lot of money right now, but it will save us some, and you know, every little bit adds up. Okay, I like those skills on him. Fitzroy is in the second position, so he can be... I don't know, he can be this? That doesn't really... I guess in case he wants to stun a guy who's further back... No, let's, let's go ahead and keep on these skills. Alright, so Fitzroy, you get... You're level 2 already. In that case, I'm kind of glad that I bought this upgrade. Do I want to buy another one? No, right? Nah. Uh, upgrades for these skills, for sure. Do I even want to upgrade? Like, this is just so... It's such a bummer to have to use. If I do have to use it, though, I'm not going to want it to miss. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, you... What's your deal? What's your story, guy? So he's in the third row in this party. Where Inspiring Tune will be available and useful. The question is, do I want to try to work this in so that I could maybe have Finale available? Finale moves him back three. So, like, our default party composition... Hold up, hold up, hold up. Our party composition could be, like... This? We could just have him open every battle with Finale. How much damage does it do now? It still has a plus 50% damage mod. It's just uh, now you like build up a little bit of extra stuff on it. If you yeah, this is fine. So let's maybe pull harvest and do this at the beginning of every battle. We finale. And then we can Dirk Stab out from there, or maybe just Inspiring Tune. Which I guess means this is probably not going to be that useful either. Well, we'll leave it on. In case a battle goes long enough, it'll be nice to have a, a powerful Isha Bleed that we can apply. So that being the case, do we want to have Flashbang instead of Uppercut? I think so. Because there's going to be a lot of situations where he's going to be in the second row before it's his turn to stun people. But on the, in the cases where he's not, I'm still going to want him to have access to a stun, I think. It's a little bit more money spent, but it's probably fine. Again, these, were, these are all skills that we're probably going to have to pay the price for eventually. Do this, and this, and I guess that. Okay, and watered. Um, do I want to pick up Demon's Pull then? Because I don't, I don't know where he's going to be a lot of the time. <laughs> nah, we'll do this. So let's... Right? Yeah. Because Demon's Pole can only target the back two slots. So if the enemy is in the back two slots, we could just artillery them anyway. And there will be some points in the battle where he'll be able to stab and somewhere he won't, and that'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, it's like a pretty... It's kind of a weird thing, but... Um, listen, nobody can say I'm not giving the gesture a real shot, right? I'm trying, even though I find him a little uh, a little awkward to use. We're going to give him a real solid go here. So, do we want to bring any trinkets, or do I want to leave trinket slots open for loot? Probably that's not a huge concern, actually, given that it's a short. Why don't we... Yeah, but it's green enemies. You know what? Let's go ahead and leave all our trinket slots open, just in case. If the game wants to give us so much loot that we can't even fit it all in our packs, I say we take advantage of that. So, that's going to be it for today. Come back next time. We're headed out to uh, headed out to the Weald. Maybe a couple of short missions jammed together. Uh, let's give people a little bit of recovery time. And then, I swear to God, one of these days we are going to find that Baron. We'll see you then.